You got your guitar all done and now it's time to paint it. You have no idea what you're gonna do next. Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. I've been getting a lot of questions for the last, oh I don't know, decade about what paint to use and what paint terms mean and what this, that, and the other means. So I've got a bunch of paint stuff out in front of me today. And what I want to do is walk you guys through all of the different paint products that, uh, that we use and a lot that we have used and maybe even a couple that we don't use anymore um, uh, or have never used before because I think it's a good idea to kind of get you guys into what, um, uh, what, what we're talking about when it's time to finish your guitar. There's a lot of myths, which I'm not going to get into. Um, there are a lot of, I like this instead of this which I'm not gonna get into. What I am gonna get into is I'm gonna talk about some terminology. I'm gonna talk about some specific products that we use. Um, uh, I'm not gonna talk about products that we, we uh, that, that, um, uh, that I don't like, because I don't wanna want step on anybody's toes, but, uh, but I'm gonna just give you guys a brief overview <clears throat> in, a, in a, a kind of a tabletop uh, version of what you uh, can use to finish your guitar. One of the things that I'm not going to talk about is anything that comes in a, in a spray can, a rattle can, a bomb can, whatever, whatever, whatever you call this stuff that you can get at Home Depot. This is not what I recommend for, uh, for using to spray your guitar. I do recommend that you use a, a gun. This actually is a really nice um, Iwata. Uh, it's kind of a detail gun. We use this particular one specifically for spraying uh, amber, which we're going to get into. But I believe that if you are going to get a professional quality um, uh, uh, guitar finish, you need to be using a spray gun where you add the paint, not something like this. Now, I probably, I probably irritated a bunch of people when I did this because, well, I use this all the time and I... Fine. Um, not to take away from any of this stuff, but I don't use this. I've... I've it's been, a, it's been decades since I've used stuff like this. You shouldn't either. If you want a professional quality finish, you got to step up to something something in a nice, uh, you got to get an air compressor, you got to get air lines, you got to get air dryers, you got to get filters, you got to get all that stuff. You got to get a good spray gun. Um, there was a time when I used to think you, the spray gun you had didn't matter. Uh, I've completely 180 on that. That's a video for another time. But all the products that I'm going to talk about today, you've got to spray out of a spray gun like this. They're not available at Home Depot in a can like this. Cool? Okay. All right, the first group of products that we're going to talk about are the most traditional for uh, electric guitar. We're not going to talk about oil finish. I guess you could say oil finish or French polish or, or, or this, that, or the other. We're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about lacquer. Um, notice I'm not talking about shellac, uh, guys, that's, that were, that's a whole nother wormhole we could go down. Um, but uh, lacquer finishes are very popular with electric guitar players and manufacturers. Maybe not so much manufacturers because lacquer is tricky to work with sometimes. Um, repair guys like lacquer. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, so I've got some, I've got some, uh, some color tone um, uh, uh, lacquer from, uh, from Stuart McDonald. I've got an old can of acrylic lacquer here. This is a PPG uh, uh, can. And I've got some vinyl sealer and I've got a gallon of lacquer thinner. So with these things here... You can uh, you can come up with a, a traditional electric guitar finish. Cool. Um, so generally, what would happen is if you had a guitar like this one that I'm working on right now, this neck through prostitute. Once you get it sanded all the way down to, um, I like to go to 220 on projects like this. You can go you can go to a finer grit than that if you want, or if you just want to go to 150, that's fine too. Uh, that's my phone, not yours. So anyway, um, if you have a project like this that's, uh, that you're working on and you, uh, you're, ready to, you're ready to start finishing because it's not finished until it's finished uh, and you want to do a lacquer uh, 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 finish, then you're going to need these products here. Let's take a deep dive into what these products actually are. So the first thing that you would probably want to do is you would want to use this vinyl sealer. Notice I did not say that you want to use any sort of pore filler um, uh, because I'm just talking about lacquer right now. I'm going to talk a little bit about pore filler here in a minute. 
Um, so you're going to want to use this vinyl sealer. Um, this is a, this is a lacquer product, and there is a, there's mostly uh, this this stuff. It's very soapy kind of solids in here. It sands very easily. Um, you can spray it on fairly thick. It sands back pretty nice. Um, this stuff from Stumac is is a good choice, but they're not the only people who make a uh, sanding sealer. Um, this is this is stuff from Stumac, and link in the description below to Stumac if you want to try out their vinyl sealer. Um, Lacquer is uh, is cleaned up and diluted with lacquer thinner. Okay, um, uh, when you're talking about <clears throat> paints like lacquer, you use thinner. Okay, now this is going to be important later on because we're going to change the terms here in a little bit. Anyway, lacquer is uh, thinned, made thinner, and diluted with lacquer thinner. Uh, you also clean up your spray guns with uh, with lacquer thinner as well. Um, Okay, let's talk a little bit about, let me move some of this stuff out of the way, the difference between nitrocellulose lacquer and acrylic lacquer. Uh, nitrocellulose is older than, than acrylic lacquer. Acrylic lacquer is easier to find these days if you're looking for colors. Like if you can find any sort of a, a metallic lacquer, it is very likely that it will be an acrylic lacquer rather than a nitrocellulose lacquer. This nitrocellulose is the, like I said, the color tone from Stumac. <clears throat> this is, it's not exactly clear. There's a little hint of uh, ambery color in this one, I think. Traditional aged gloss. The neat thing about lacquer is it repairs very easily. Uh, the coat that you, that you spray on um, actually um, uh, etches into the previous coat. It has a chemical reaction to the previous coat. It almost melts the previous coat doesn't almost, it actually does. It actually melts into the previous coats. So you want to go slow when you're using this stuff. But um, the neat thing about lacquer is, say you didn't want to use acrylic lacquer, say you wanted to make your own color, you can use <clears throat> some of this color tint stuff. Where's the, where's my little can of color tint? Hold on. My buddy Jeff Jewitt at Trans Tint makes these colors. He makes them for, uh, his, his company is Trans Tint. He also makes them for Stumac. Uh, you can get little bottles like this, or you can get great big bottles like this. This is neat stuff. You can actually mix this into regular nitrocellulose or acrylic lacquer, and you can make translucent colors. Um, basically, what you're making is, is kind of like a candy color, okay? So this one is, a, is an amber, so you can get an idea from here. This is a, gives you like a kind of a yellow uh, clear coat. So if you've got a real nice piece of maple, say on like a Les Paul, and you've got, you've got your uh, your your guitar is all sealed up with vinyl sealer and it's nice and smooth and you're ready to put on your color coats and your clear coats, that's what you would do. So you would do your sanding sealer coat and then you would sand that all back and get it all nice and smooth and any bumps or imperfections out of the, uh, the sealer coat, get it all nice and, and smooth. Then you're gonna, uh, you're gonna take some of your uh, trans tint aniline dyes or any other color, you know, however you want to do it, mix it in with your uh, with your regular nitrocellulose lacquer or acrylic lacquer, and uh, and mix that up, and you can spray a color over your sanding sealer, and that will make your your top pop a little bit. Um, once you do that, and you get your color exactly how you want, say you're doing a burst or something like that, uh, scrape any binding, peel any masking stuff like that, then you can use exactly the same stuff as your top coat. So that's kind of cool. Um, so you got your color coats on, then you say I want I want to go for my gloss top coats that protect my color coat. You're going to use your uh, your regular nitrocellulose lacquer or your acrylic lacquer on top of that and then let all that stuff set up and then you can go to uh, final buffing and polishing, okay? So anyway, so with that uh, with lacquer, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you've got your, uh, your vinyl sanding sealer, which again is a lacquer product. Then you've got your color coats, which is um, regular nitrocellulose lacquer mixed with color. Uh, or you can buy acrylic lacquer that has color already in it. And then use the same lacquer for your top coats. Obviously, if this was color, you wouldn't use this for your top coat. You want to use clear for your top coat, okay? And then you clean all of your guns and stuff up with lacquer thinner. And if your lacquer is a little too thick and it doesn't spray out right, you can always thin it out with lacquer thinner, okay? So that's the that's kind of the old school way to do it. Uh, lacquer takes a lot of time. You got to let all the coats dry. Um, sometimes you get blushing and things like that. 
uh, or if like you've got a layer on top that's actually dried before the layer on the bottom is, you get these kind of weird weird things happen. So lacquer is uh, is a good product. It's it's traditional. It's neat. People dig it. It smells great. Got it. Um, but uh, we don't use lacquer anymore because um, frankly, it takes a long, long time to get right. Let's talk about what we do use and all the other products that I've got out in front of me right now. I'm still going to go ahead and keep my lacquer thinner out because we will still clean all of our guns with lacquer thinner. Um, mostly because it's easy to get. You can go to Home Depot and buy this stuff. Um, it's easy to get. It's easy to, um, uh, easy to work with. Cleans out guns real well. Um, stuff like that. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the next couple of products that I want to talk about are from my good buddies at SimTech Coatings. Now, guys, SimTech does not pay me to say this stuff, but I'm, I'm telling you about SimTech Coatings because I get a lot of questions about SimTech Coatings. All right, the first product that we're going to talk about is UV Pour Fill. This is what we use for pore filler now, so if I'm going to use my I'm gonna use my neck through prostitute as an example. Once this is sanded to 220, I'm gonna wipe my UV pore fill on here and, and I'm gonna hit it with a UV light. Now, you can't just go and put it out in the sun. I mean, it will probably eventually harden, but um, you can't count on the sun, so you need to have a good UV lamp to, um, to, to cure the UV pore fill. Um, and once you do, then the UV pour fill, all the UV pour fill does is it just fills the pores. It's not a finish. You actually scuff a lot of it back after you're done. But UV pour fill is nice because you will use less of the products I'm about to talk about with you um, if you use UV pour fill. The product that I want to talk about is uh, something that we've been using for a long, long time. It's 2850 Easy Sanding Sealer, okay? Uh, I'll put a link in the description to SimTech Coating. Guys, you can't just go online and buy it. Um, uh, I mean, you can, but it's better to call them. Uh, their, their website's old school. They're old school guys. Call them up, and uh, they will be able to help you with shipping and all that stuff. They ship all over the world, so don't tell me I can't get it in wherever I live, because you can. Um, SimTech Coatings is out of California. They'll ship you a gallon. They'll ship you a quart. They'll ship you five gallons. They'll ship you 55 gallons. In fact, I have it on good authority that some guitar companies that you know of use SimTech products and they probably buy them in 55-gallon drums, okay? So this is a polyester resin and it has to be cured with MEKP. So for, um, I think you mix up a cup of this with a cap full of this. It's been a long time since we did all the math, but basically what you do is you fill up your paint cup, you take a cap from the, from the MEKP, you pour it in there, you mix it up, and in a couple hours, this stuff, um, it gets hot. It, it turns into a, a little polyester rock over your guitar. And uh, let me show you what, that, what it looks like once it's been sanded back. This is a guitar that a guy in a workshop is working on. So this is what the, uh, uh, the UV pour fill, filler and sanding sealer looks like on a guitar. And that's it, okay? So, um, <clears throat> so UV pour fill and sanding sealer is kind of a step that we use on just about everything now. Um, uh, this polyester uh, uh, sanding sealer is very similar to what Fender used back in the day. They called it Fuller Plast. They use it on everything now, even if there's lacquer on top of it. You can spray lacquer over the top of, um, of the sanding sealer. Um, this is a, definitely an easier sanding sealer to work with than vinyl sanding sealer, but it's stinkier and you've got to, you, you don't want to spray it in your garage. Um, it, it, it will stink up the joint, okay? All right, so UV sanding, or I'm sorry, UV pore filler and sanding sealer that is activated by MEKP from SimTech Coatings. Guys, you can get that stuff from SimTech. Link in the description below. Just call them and uh, don't, don't try to order it from Amazon or anything like that. Just call up SimTech and they'll get you sorted out, okay? So once you've got your, um, once you've got your SimTech easy sanding sealer on there, Sand it back with like uh, 220 or 320 and get everything nice and level and smooth. No pock marks or anything like that. And then you're ready to put on your color coats. Or if you just want to go to a top coat, then you just put on your top coat because you like the natural wood look, whatever. Um, uh, there are some, uh, some advances in, in modern paints. And, uh, and we're going to talk about, about, about colors here in just a second. But let's say you're, you're using woods like Babinga or Rosewood or Cocobolo or anything that's oily and South American um, and all the good stuff that people like, uh, all the, the dark woods that, that, um, that people love. And I love them too. They're super cool. Um, 
If you spray the polyester uh, uh, finish on top of that, or the, I'm sorry, the polyester sanding sealer on top of that, it is very likely that it will not stick. Don't worry, Simtech has you covered with these products here. So cool, in fact, that I have never used them, but I wanna show you what I'm gonna use them on. So this is a guitar project that I've been working on for a while. Um, this is, a, I call this one the Icon. This has a rosewood back and side. So this is basically an acoustic guitar, um, uh, a acoustic guitar construction. This one's gonna have a Charlie Christian pickup in it. But because the back and sides are rosewood, I need to come up with an adhesion promoter so that my sanding sealer will stick to this stuff. So that's what this stuff is here. So this is a two part process. You mix, I don't know, it looks like mix one to one. So mix a, you know, a one part of this into one part of this and you spray that out onto your uh, uh, oilier woods like rosewood and then you have a nice base for the Simtech sanding sealer. Otherwise, the, uh, the sanding sealer itself, the polyester just simply will not stick to that, okay? So if you're an acoustic guitar maker, like, um, uh, like my buddy Jeff Jewitt is, or like I want to be, um, this, this is the good stuff you want to use for, um, for sticking stuff to rosewood. Okay, now we have our base coat on, our sealer coat. We've, we've pour filled, we've got our sealer. Everything's nice and smooth and level. It's time to add um, a color coat. I like to use Tamco paints. Uh, Tamco makes cool stuff. These are, uh, let's see, these are acrylic urethane base coats. These are, um, uh, you need to have a clear coat on top of these. Um, so they, these come in like a host of different colors. This is uh, secret silver. These are actually both secret silver. You can get lots of other colors. Uh, PPG, of course, any automotive store will carry, like if you want yours to be the same color as your I don't know, 2008 Acura, great, no problem. You can go in with the paint code and, and uh, PPG will mix up the paint for you, give it to you and they'll put it in like a, a quart thing like this. If you can get it in a jar like this, this is super cool because it's got the nice cap, it's easier to pour. Um, what if you want to do translucent color? You can get candy colors from, uh, from Tamco or you can make your own. Um, I'm not 100% sure, let's see. I'm looking for a product. I can't find it right now in front of me. We might have we might have used it all up. It is an intercoat clear. PPG calls it DBC 500. Um, some people call it blending clear. The idea is it is um, it is a product that you can mix. Um, uh, you you can mix. It, it reduces or thins your um, your color. So if you wanna if you wanna uh, make the secret silver a little a little thinner, you can add a reducer like this guy right here, you can actually redo. This is, uh, this is Tamco Reducer, goes with this paint. But there is also a product that, um, that's called uh, Intercoat Clear. Uh, so the reason that you'd want to use an Intercoat Clear is let's say you sand your metallic and you need to go back and, and spray some new metallic around there. If you just spray metallic around that one spot, it's just gonna look like you patched it. Intercoat Clear is a way you can mix your, uh, your metallic color into your Intercoat Clear and, uh, and you can blend that in, color blend that in, it won't, it'll look seamless. Um, lacquer is nice because lacquer melts into the previous coat. Inner coat clear is not unlike that. It, uh, it is a way to make your, um, your, your like a patch look, look seamless and perfect. One of the other cool things though about inner coat clear, or like I said, DBC 500, there's lots of different names for it, is you can mix uh, Jeff's trans tint dyes in with that stuff. And in fact, we do that. Um, so you can mix in your, your, uh, your candy colors into your inner coat clear, spray that on. You can do bursts. You can do just complete, you know, uh, like I want to do an orange top on my guitar. Cool, orange top. If you want to do a burst, you can do, um, you know, all your, your burst edges and you can go back with amber and, uh, and have a super cool top. By the way, we teach all this stuff in our two-day paint extension. Um, if you come out for a workshop here, you can, you can get in on that action. Or if you come out to, say, our $9,000 Strat build, uh, we, do, we do paint work like that here, too. We give you a little taste of what that's like. Um, so Intercoat Clear mixed with color or just straight-up color that you can buy from Tamco or PPG or whatever turns you on. Um, uh, it's all, it's all acrylic urethane paint, and it's, it goes on nice and thin. That's kind of a cool thing. I like to have super, super thin paint jobs, so that's just me. And once you do that, you need to lock that color in with a top coat, with a clear coat. Uh, what do we got here? I, I probably got some clear around here. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, here's some Tamco Euro Clear. This comes in lots of different uh, sheen levels. I think this is, this is, uh, this is gloss, I think. So you want to mix this with a uh, with a, actually a, a hardener. So this is a two-part paint. 
Uh, the neat thing about this is you don't have to wait for two months for it to actually cure or dry. Um, this is this is depending on what size hardener you or what speed hardener you use, you are ready to um, you're ready to go with the uh, the um, the clear coat and you mix it with the hardening uh, uh, agent. And after after however long it takes, a couple hours, two hours, four hours, whatever your hardening speed is, um, your paint is ready to go and it's hard and 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 it's ready to buff or it's ready to do whatever you want to do with that. Again, guys, you're going to want to clean all of your spray equipment with good old-fashioned lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner will clean all of your guns, etc., etc. Um, I want to touch on a couple more things. One of them is final wipe solvent, which is basically naphtha. Um, anytime you put your hands or your fingers or any of your paws on your guitar project, you're going to want to wipe off, make sure you don't get any oil that sticks around and tries to live under the finish. Use this final wipe solvent on your, um, on your, your, your project and make sure that you don't get a bunch of oils on your in between, like say your sealer coat and your, and your color coat or your top coat. Final wipe is your friend. You can also use alcohol and water, but we really like this stuff here. So I think that's going to kind of take us home. I hope that I've answered a bunch of your questions about paint products, where to get them from, what does what, um, the difference between uh, thinner. You don't buy you don't buy uh, acrylic thinner. You buy acrylic reducer. Okay, so some people it's kind of the same idea, but um, if you go into a PPG paint store and I need and say I need some reducer for or some thinner for this, they'll go. You mean reducer? And you'll go. No, I mean thinner. And they'll go. No, you mean reducer. Um, so there's a lot of terms that are um, a little tricky. They don't. Most of them carry over, but some of them don't. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyway, guys, I hope that that answers a bunch of your questions about paintwork, and I hope that your paintwork gets better because of this video. So uh, if you like the video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. If you appreciate the content that we that we make here and you want to support us financially, I would encourage you to go over to Patreon or you can sign up on YouTube. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys cool content like this. No problem if you can't. Just share the video as many places as you can possibly think of and help us grow the channel that way. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. We'll see you next time, guys. Have a great week.